Hey folks, it's Jordan, the Compassionate Behaviorist, and I'm going to talk to you today about one of the most exciting discoveries or paradigm shifts in mental health treatment that I've become aware of. It's developed over the past 20 years or so, at least in the research literature and in practice of therapy, and it comes from a field of science called contextual behavioral science. And so the exciting thing to me is this concept called psychological flexibility. And psychological flexibility is oftentimes described as a different approach to treating mental health than it, the old approach of reducing symptoms of mental health disorders. And psychological flexibility, just put the definition out there, is basically one's ability to contact private events, often painful, Private events meaning thoughts, emotions, phys physical sensations or urges. So the ability to contact or be aware and experience those private events while still being able to make choices that are in line with one's values. So again, the definition of psychological flexibility, one's ability to contact painful private events while still being able to make choices in line with one's values. So low, when we have low psychological flexibility, painful thoughts, painful emotions, painful urges would disproportionately kind of be in control of the choices we make rather than what we find most meaningful, what we care about, um, what we value in life. Whereas if we had high psycho higher psychological flexibility, then even if we're experiencing difficult or unwanted thoughts, emotions or physical sensations, we would be more able to make choices based on uh, what we care about and what we value. That's the basic idea. Now, why is this exciting? Why is this different? Um, for me, it's exciting, you know, as I, when I went to in graduate school and was learning about different methods, one of the methods that's the most prominent and has been, you know, and still is, is uh, called cognitive behavioral therapy. And the way my, I was first not as open to that kind of therapy. I didn't like it as much for different reasons. Um, and I was really drawn to the Rogerian or, or person-centered approach, Carl Rogers type of therapy, which was more of a therapy where rather than helping people try to change their thoughts, you're just creating a, a therapeutic environment to, and a place where you can uh, welcome someone opening up to you and you can have empathy, deep empathy, and compassion in a non-judgmental place and the ideas in that accepting uh, compassionate frame they're going to naturally um, things that they can change will naturally start to change and i found that to be really really effective and so i've always had this kind of acceptance first orientation that change sustainable change will come from a place of acceptance more than a change first orientation i still hold to that and, and that's where psychological flexibility, I think, really kind of in some ways brings these two different methods or the, the kind of Rogers acceptance first approach in line with the more behavioral or cognitive behavioral approach of how do people, how do we actually change things for people? How do we change people's thoughts and emotions and patterns and patterns of behaviors? And so um, psychological flexibility oftentimes is, is tied to a kind of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy, or referred to as ACT, said as a word, ACT. Um, so again, let's, let's talk about how this is different than say a symptom reduction model. Let's say there's a person, maybe you out there or, or whoever out there who struggles with depression and the symptoms of depression could be lack of sleep or too much sleep. It could be lack of motivation. It could be um, uh, anhedonia or the inability to experience pleasure from things that used to be pleasurable. It could be thoughts and feelings of hopelessness or worthlessness. It could be difficulty concentrating. There's a lot of different symptoms to depression. If we go with the, the symptom reduction model, then we would, you know, the therapist or psychiatrist or whoever's treating the individual, um, or the individual with depression would be focused on, okay, my depression, you know, um, my life will be better and things will go better once these symptoms are gone. And that makes a lot of sense. And I think most of us would want that for ourselves and for another a friend of ours or a client if, if we're working with someone. 
we'd want to help their symptoms of depression go down, and that would make sense. Um, now, in when we're the other paradigm or the psychological flexibility paradigm is different because instead of focusing or prioritizing symptom reduction, we're focusing on increasing someone's psychological flexibility. So in this depression example, it would be, you know, it'd be nice if symptoms go down. However, what we're going to focus on is when you're feeling low motivation, when there's thoughts like there's no point or urges to stay in bed, even though in in the in our head we know that we're going to feel more depressed if we stay in bed let's say or there's thoughts of hopelessness or worthlessness or even though there's like an aversion to go do something fun with friends that we used to think was fun or we think maybe it would be fun but i just don't want to so when those things come up psychological flexibility would allow us to experience those private events those thoughts emotions urges sensations and rather than have to control those or obey them or disobey them we we kind of it's a contemplative kind of approach that we're noticing them we're noticing our internal experience we're not getting we're learning to not get so fused to them we're opening up to them you know rather than doing things to get rid of them in the short term to avoid them experientially and then we're practicing getting back in touch with what do I value? Regardless of what I'm experiencing internally, what do I care about that lasts, lasts longer than, than a, a difficult day or even week? What do I care about that's, that's more lasting and more um, kind of at my core than some of these internal experiences that I don't like? And when we clarify our values, then is the committed action part. That part can be hard, but it's a lot harder if we're just kind of fake it till you make it without having clarified what we value. If we're really getting in touch and trying to get in touch with what do we care about? Do I, what do I value? Do I value love? Is it connection? Like what's worth sacrificing and, and doing something that's hard to do right now? And if we can clarify what's the, what that is and remember it or find ways to connect with that, then making the committed action to actually follow through with getting out of bed and taking a shower, let's say if you're a depressed individual, or if, if it's a substance abuse issue and you're in early recovery and you're having intense urges and thoughts and like you, that addict part of your mind is, is, has a plan of this is how we can, you know, get what we need. Psychological flexibility would look like noticing that, being fully aware of it, and then remembering why is it that I'm trying to, to recover from this addiction for, to, to, to this uh, disorder, why? What is it that I care about? And then, could the committed action would be, you know, calling your friend or sponsor or whoever it is, going to a meeting or call, or reaching out for support, um, kind of holding yourself accountable. Let's say those would be the committed action steps. So psychological flexibility, different than symptom reduction, and it's not just about mental health disorders either. This this is the other thing that's exciting to me is. You know, it's very much about human beings and human pain and suffering. And the idea that our pain is not necessarily our enemy, that it's our reaction to our pain. That it's our closing off to it, escaping it, avoiding it, controlling it. Um, which sometimes, if our approach is symptom reduction, that's we're actually feeding into it. One of the things I've seen more than any other kind of phenomenon that really relates to this is the more clients I work with who say have depression, a lot of times the depression has, is its own problem, but even worse than the depression is their own kind of response to it, which is um, being depressed about being depressed. And it's really hard not to get stuck in that cycle. But that, I see that as more of a, uh, a, a uh, natural extension of this idea of prioritizing symptom reduction. Prioritizing symptom reduction kind of pathologizes feeling sad or, or having periods of life where we're more down than other times. And it's not that depression isn't real, it's that it is real. But the idea is if we are, when we're depressed, if we're like, oh no, my life is, you know, um, why am I feeling depressed? And, and we start getting depressed about being depressed, then we're, it's this more downward spiral. Uh, same thing with anxiety. A lot of times people who I work with who have anxiety, 
when it gets really bad, it's, it's that they're having anxiety about their anxiety. And so the idea with psychological flexibility is, is kind of where we're saying, you know what, what if I can learn, and it's easier said than done, but what if I can learn to accept first these experiences that I'm, that I'm having? These worries that I'm having if it's anxiety or these feelings of worthlessness or thoughts of worthlessness if it's depression if it's um, substance abuse noticing and accepting that I have urges it doesn't accepting in this case doesn't mean you like that you're having urges to to relapse or urges to stay in bed when you're depressed or urges to um, avoid a social situation if you have social anxiety accepting means that you're deeply aware you're noticing, you're not escaping your internal experience. And it really kind of harkens back to behavioral methods of exposure in a way. It's kind of mental, cognitive, verbal exposure where I'm going to sit with my experience and trust that that opening up isn't going to kill me, that opening up to my own experience is actually going to help me grow because I'm going to gain the psychological flexibility and then I'll be able to um, do actions or choices or make decisions in my life that are more directed by what I value, by what I care about. So psychological flexibility, one of the most exciting ideas in, uh, in mental health treatment, but also in just human living, you know, and whether it's kind of the self-help world or just understanding, uh, ourselves and how it's normal for us to get caught up in in painful thoughts emotions urges and it's normal for us to have avoidant reactions and we can learn to to sit with and to be with these experiences and then to make choices based more on what brings us joy or what helps us connect with what we care about so if you have any other questions about psychological flexibility about these approaches um, I'll do some more videos on them as there's a lot more to talk about with psychological flexibility. Thanks for being here. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.